Hello everyone. Uh, we're going to call the Thursday, uh, June 2nd uh, work session of Borough Council to order. Uh, Ms. Bryant, will you call the roll? Absolutely. Council President Fred Bush. Here. Council Vice President Michelle Panopoulos. Here. Council Member Barbara Fortner. Here. Council Member Rob McGrady. Here. Council Member Cindy Rickards. Here. Council Member Bob Weisbord. I'm present by Zoom. Council Member Ira Winston. Here. Mayor Andrea Deutsch. Here. All right. Uh, my comments are that uh, for the time being, we have moved uh, our council meetings into this large room uh, at Borough Hall uh, in order to uh, take advantage of the, the nice big windows behind us uh, and also uh, to allow more spacing should uh, members of the public uh, be here in, in greater numbers. Uh, so this will be the case for the next several meetings, I think we'll announce if we're going to go back to the uh, to the smaller room. But for now, the meetings of Borough Council will be in the, in the large room. That is it for my comments. Uh, Ms. Mayor? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, we need to uh, be skip item three. Skip item three. I've done this before. All right. Uh, let's go to consider, sir. Andrea, one second. Let's stay in the proper order. Uh, consideration of any changes or additions to the agenda. Uh, so I will propose that we make a change to the agenda, uh, that we create item 5A, which would be a discussion of uh, the public art project that uh, we had discussed earlier this year, the photographic art project. So before public comment? It'll be before public comment because the public, that'll give the public a chance to respond to it um, should they wish during public comment. Do you need a motion and a second? Uh, I will need a motion and a second. Okay, I move to amend the agenda to add item 5A, discussion of public art project. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All right, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor of amending the agenda to add 5A, Discussion of Public Art Project, please raise your hands. All right. I see a hand. That, okay, unanimous. Great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, are there any other changes or additions to the agenda? Okay. Now, I have made my president's comments. Uh, Mayor Deutsch, do you have uh, any comments tonight? I do. Um, I just I wanted to let uh, the public know that last week we had a couple uh, thefts of wallets in the downtown businesses business area, um, and the police are are uh, investigating it and and trying to find out what they can. Uh, I would just remind people to when you're when you're shopping uh, anywhere, but including including Norbreth. You know, know where your wallet is, know where your phones are, know where your val valuables are, um, and uh, just uh, don't don't leave them and walk away and and presume that uh, that no one will ever touch anything. So just be aware of your surroundings and and make smart decisions with your wallet. Um, likewise, uh, when you park your car, you should you should lock your car. You should take your keys. Uh, don't leave unlocked cars with uh, keys in on my, this is an announcement I make a few times a year. Um, and yet some folks insist on doing that. And it's really, uh, it's an invitation for someone who's up to uh, per, uh, perhaps some no good uh, to, to take advantage of. And let's just not make ourselves an easy target. Um, uh, next on the list, I just want to thank uh, John Nordy and the, the Legion for putting together a wonderful Memorial Day parade. It was really a lovely day, followed by uh, a moving ceremony. And I want to thank him and, and all the veterans for their efforts in creating, in creating this special day. Uh, and that's it. All right. Thank you, Mayor Deutsch. Okay. <clears throat> so let us move on to item 5A, which will be a uh, discussion of the a public art project. Um, so we have uh, Scott Lewis here. Uh, Cindy, do you want to speak a little before uh, Lewis? Sure. Um, Mr. It? Lewis, you probably have seen Scott around town with his camera over the years uh, and is publishing a fabulous photo documentary uh, book on our great little town. Um, and he contacted me some months ago with this really great idea that as we see so much change and kind of the reemergence of Narberth 
in our pandemic recovery-ish, I guess it feels like. Um, it was really the perfect time with the resurgence of events to celebrate just our history in town. And Scott suggested kind of in the um, spirit of the most mural arts in Philadelphia where significant events um, are, are demonstrated as public art across the city, a version of that for Narmer. So he brought this proposal to us a couple months ago. Um, he worked closely with Ty Bressy to curate specific uh, photos and quotes and places in the borough, and he's here with that proposal now to share with us all. Is that about it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Lewis, why don't you come over? I think we have your proposal sure. up on Where the slides. Well, <clears throat> this is our, our uh, microphone and camera over here. Okay. So. Yeah, so maybe if you can come like, in yeah. front of that table yeah. there, like in front of that okay. side. Sure. Thank you, Scott. Sure, no problem. Um, yeah, so as Cindy said, this is a project I've worked on off and on for about three years, kind of quietly, person by person, space by space. Um, you can click through. Um, just of my own curiosity. And what I put together with Todd is a selection of 20 images out of about 60 that are about between half of them are scenes and the other half are portraits where I talk to people about what made Narberth stand out. Why is it special? Why is it distinct from its closest neighbors? So the idea is to present the images around three specific areas. One is sort of the library playground area, the fences there, the um, basketball court, tennis courts area as well, and then um, in downtown. So it would be a combination of being on sides of buildings, being in windows, oh, and then also the borough hall um, as another option uh, for locations. So the idea is to create a narrative, a story about Narberth in it's not the story, it's a story, and it's a dialogue of people kind of talking to each other through the images and through their words. Um, so this first selection are images that I have a, a vision going along the fence by the library right on Windsor, uh, plotting out, you know, that could be like every, um, I don't know what those are called, on the fence, every block of fencing like between the posts, but just to kind of spread it out a little bit um, as, as a collection of images there. And then, this next selection is just to see them just a little bit closer up, since they were pretty small on that. I feel like this is a group where I don't have to explain what we're seeing. <laughs> yeah. So often I show this and I'm like, oh, this, this, and I'm like, I don't have to explain any of that here. Um, so one of the things we liked about this pairing is it's, it's a use of the park in two very different ways. Um, one is obviously the July 4th, and the other is something that happened during the pandemic, which was yoga at the little mini basketball court. Um, so this was you know, thought of in that space, sort of have those images there. Um, these horizontal scene centers don't have sort of the, the commentary that portraits do, but they just sort of stand on their own. Envisioning this, I, I've talked to um, uh, Tim Rubin about his properties and the um, fencing, and so I was envisioning this. This is the last day of Rickland's on the left, right after Jed had locked the door and he came out and there was a crowd of people there, and then this is obviously what we're seeing today with this question of what comes next. Um, how, do, how are we changing? But they're hanging those images on the fencing itself. So a picture of the fence so, on the fence? Yes. <laughs> yeah. A little meta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so this is kind of where you just get into how the images play off of each other. The next effort is next week is to knock on some doors, talk to some business owners about, you know, being willing to have a picture in their shop or, you know, it would be on the in the front windows so that there's a dialogue from the street as opposed to deeper into someone's store um, or on the side of a building, um, just about town. And some of the texts may get edited a little bit based on space, but working with the designer on that next week, so this should all be resolved a week from now. And you know, the pairings are not going to necessarily be literally next to each other, but they may be sort of proximate in a sense, so that there's this dynamic between the images. Um,
So this is, again, a idea, or an idea of what this could look like. Would be some, you know, fine tuning as sort of get closer to literally sitting on the street with the images and thinking about the narrative that comes out through which images of what space. Um, was it necessarily planned that Fred Hansel would be on the Borough Hall? Um, for those who may not know, Fred, 28 years, I think, in this building. Um, but it just kind of worked out well. <laughs> so again, just sort of proposal ideas. I've, you know, I've gotten approval for the buildings here, but obviously, we need to talk with shop owners about their buy-in on it as well. I'm going to put Jim near a tree. Yes. I don't yeah. think we can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ideally, it'd be nice if there were a, a tree planted in front of the <laughs> in front of the photo. Right. Or the yeah. absence of a tree space. To be yeah. Planted. Absolutely. I like kind of the bare tree space. Yeah. Maybe. And these are the conversations that like, people way. will have on the there street. There you go. Right. There right. you go. See, it's already working. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I assume you have releases from all these people. Every single person who's in the portraits has said yes, and who's identifiable in any picture has said yes, yes. It, along with seeing their words with the image, like full, full fledged. Yeah, because yeah, there's one thing to have a picture, it's another thing to be on the side of a building. And, and it's another thing to have your words with your picture yeah. on the side of a building. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And there was a little bit of editing. Some people were like, well, let me fix the grammar because we were talking, and some fine tuning did go on, but yes, everyone's signed off on it. So, so in this example here, yes. we don't see words. Correct. But you're this, saying that that there would be at some Correct. So not that's kind of where the design part will come in next based on, because if we put it up on the bottom, it's not going to work well because it'll be a foot and a half off the ground. So yeah. we're with a designer on typography treatment and it'll probably be sort of along the left side of the image, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be on the canvas. Yes. It yes. won't be like a separate. Correct. Correct. It'll be a single canvas where the text will be on the left side, let's say, or the right side of the image, a single, single thing mounted. But some of the pictures won't have text because um, some the, of what you show us don't. The horizontal ones, correct. And if they do, it's like two words. Okay. And, and that might be integrated into the image mm -hmm. itself. But, I mean, this might be a little bit like technical, but like, you, have you figured out how you're mounting these? Things? Yes. Did you got that? Yep. Right? Okay. I, don't, I don't need to hear the details. Of this. Yep. <laughs> Went through several options. <laughs> um, and not to belabor this, but it was Todd and I were on the same train the other day. Yeah. And he was talking about how you curate the different photos and how it's really meant to stop and have that conversational piece like we just were about the tree and how the images really did spark conversation. And it, was, it really pointed out what I don't know about public art, actually, and just made me even more excited about this. So thank, I think it's great timing, right before we start this flood of, of events in the borough. Mm -hmm. and, 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 thank you. And, and it is exciting. Like, I hope things happen as a result of putting it out there, but you know, right there when you say there should be a tree here, that's sort of evidence that it that that, that that works, right? Yeah. And I guess the thinking is to just sort of put them all up at once, or yeah, stages, or no, 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 it all go up at once. I mean, in a, over the course of a day or two. Yeah. And there were some other possible scenarios that Todd was proposing that I haven't gotten to yet of you know doing a talk. And you know, having an evening maybe where we project the entire body of work, um, which are 60 images, um, that would be a little more complicated, but easily done at some point. Because uh, the other discussion, the other point would be how long will these be up for? Um, I feel like it's a balance between making it worth the while to do it and wearing out to all of them. So if we're talking about the first of July, the first week, I would feel at least into September makes sense, but. But what's your sense of how long they would actually like last if they were? Oh, yeah. No problem. They would last. Yeah, I've already addressed that question as well. Yeah, because yeah. they'd be on vinyl prints, like any vinyl banner you see, and they'd be so more no problem to withstand weather. Yeah. Or sorry. Yeah. No, it's funny. Yeah, it is everything for show weather. Yeah, and um, you had discussed having the partner with the cycling club and maybe doing a cycling yeah. club or not with that. Depending on how interesting the route gets, but sure, I'm up for. 
up for doing that with Kim for sure. And I could even do like a, a tour of it, a bike tour of it, like talk, talk through it and have I'm, people in the pictures. I know one thing I'd ask initially, but I'm going to ask if there's any possibility of putting any on the south side. Uh, is that still a possibility to consider <laughs> see maybe the well, apartment another, building owners have a little you know, real estate on there. the side would you know, we always feel left out. Sure. You know, no parades <laughs> come over there. It's like we don't exist. <laughs> It might be nice to see if, sure. if there's a place. I mean, yeah. I know it's, I mean, it's, there's not businesses, but the there bridge, are apartments. The, the bridge yeah. could definitely the be bridge. a place. Yes. No, so, I'm talking on the side. Okay, this your yard. We should do some. No, you're right. I've got room in my house. You have room in my house. Yeah, the challenge, of course, is okay. traffic, foot okay. traffic, you know, as well yeah. as I know. on what. Yeah. The bridge is a good idea, though. The bridge is really The bridge is definitely something new. Yeah. As far as approval for that, would that be, I don't know how complicated it gets. You're looking at it. Okay, so well, that was a question. Approval for it? I'm not sure we would ask. Do we own no, the bridge? Yeah, it would be asked for forgiveness, not permission. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. That works with my soul. It may, it may have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, is the train station sort of off limits or not? Because that's a south side public space. Then I think you need to ask for Now that's they're, they're more likely to. They're more likely property. to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's something for the tunnel. The garden. Yeah. The tunnel. Yeah, or the garden. Yeah. Right? The tunnel is Septus property. Yeah. Oh, it's all Septus property. We have permission. We did get permission to put the yeah. scouting in. Yeah. Right. So that makes sense. It can't be just impossible. Yeah. Just keep it simple. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry. Why, why don't you think, think about it? And, I will uh, yeah. you know, to rehash our previous conversation on this, I do remember discussion of, of borough administration not having to do too much with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep it simple. I, I think yeah. we shouldn't plan on being able to get permission from SEPTA. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Agree. Michelle's prodigious. That sounds so, good. And then in, ter in terms of time, I think you know, I think that the idea of keeping it through September makes sense right now. Yeah, if yeah. if it's a big hit or something, and people want to keep it for longer, I mean, you know, we can consider that. Sure. But for now, let's let's think September. Um, what are the current costs looking like? Well, that'll be dictated a bit by the specific sizing and whether everything's done on the same material or not. But probably at, at least half, if not less than half, of what I was originally thinking. Because it 20 pictures versus almost 40. Okay. So, so we originally allocated we originally allocated four thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it'll be anywhere near that. Okay. And and the mounting to your question is relatively simple, just a concrete anchor into the wall of a washer. Done. And of course the People Clocking when it's done. Yeah, and the, build, the building owners have already like, approved that. Uh, some. Like, yes. Well, they will before you do it. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to hold it in as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are there any other concerns from council? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's move on to public comment. Uh, so there is currently, well, Scott and Jim, I assume we do not have public comment for us. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so we'll move on to online public comment. Uh, Samantha, if you can. Sure. So I think um, everyone pretty much knows the drill by now, but just, you know, for everyone's sake, um, either please use raise hand function on Zoom or literally raise your hand and I will call on you and you're welcome to make your uh, public comment. Uh, Carol Marie Scanlon. Good evening. Before I start public comment, I'd like to again ask council to uh, speak louder. It's very difficult to hear, especially in the larger room with the microphone farther away wearing a mask. Uh, most of the presentation of the gentleman was very muffled and uh, your responses we could not hear. So that's a request that I have. Um, as far as my public comment, I want to talk about um, math. And my question is with 201, um, how much actually does that building bring in gross and net? And then how much does it cost to a year to run it, upkeep, maintain? Because Bob Weisberg said after the last meeting, he uh, grabbed myself and my neighbor and said that there must be income from the property. Uh, Michelle Panopoulos says uh, at uh, last meeting, we must realize replacement income from the building on the property. So that leads to the question is how much do you expect? 
And how are you going to achieve that? And additionally, Bob was saying, oh, taxes will go up a lot. But actually, how much would taxes go up? Um, for example, if there's about 1,500 households in Narberth, if the actual building brings in $250,000, that's less than $200 a household. And it leads again to the question of public engagement meetings, specifically asking the public their thoughts of the benefit of having a full community park on Sabine versus more development, increased density for a nominal increase in taxes. The other question is what other budget items can offset the potential tax increase? But then on the other hand, if the building costs more than it has been stated, as it has been stated in the long run, having a park corner to corner is feasible because if the property's a loss, it would save taxpayers money. You've said multiple times that the building isn't feasible. Well, if it costs more, if we're paying money to maintain this building, then we should have a park from corner to corner. Um, before this council can move forward, the really responsible thing would be to have public engagement meetings with the residents of Narberth to see what the people, the ones that you serve, would really like for our property. And I really think before this council goes forward, you need to have public meetings, multiple public meetings. You have said all along there'd be public meetings. And now you, the, one of the narratives you're saying is we don't have anything to present. We do. We public do. And before you can really make a decision, before having the, uh, the Montgomery County Redevelopment Housing Authority come, we want to know what that is. Before you have HRA, HRG, how do you know what they could do or should do until you ask the people. Thanks, Carol Marie. 30 seconds, go ahead. That's my comment is, is you really need to have multiple public engagement meetings. All right, thank you. Uh, let me- And again, if you could speak louder because I can barely okay. hear you. Carol Marie, let me direct you to the, uh, the Borough website, uh, narberthpa.gov slash information slash 201-savine-avenue. That has all of our details about building leases, the financial reports on the building, um, basically all of the background information uh, on 201 Sabine, including the, uh, the financials, the detailed financials uh, are on the website. Um, and if you just search for 201 Sabine on the borough website, it will come up. Oh, I know, I have, and I've gotten the information, and that's why I'm asking it to be really looked at and readdressed and look at as far as your time the property. Time. All right, thank you. <coughs> All right, who else would like to make public comment here tonight? Uh, Lauren Solberg. Good evening, Lauren Solberg, 200 Sabine Avenue. At the May 19th meeting, council referred to the community survey done a couple of years ago regarding the future of 201 Sabine. This survey asked residents to indicate whether they were interested in, and I quote exactly uh, word for word from your website, preserving the existing daycare and community nonprofit uses, regardless of whether the existing building and lot configuration are changed to accommodate, end quote. That's the entire question. This statement was prioritized in third place as worded. The survey made no mention of the possibility of including dense housing in the same building as is now being proposed in option four, and no mention of how we would be paying for the cost of the day car portion of the building. So the community was actually never asked the question about the proposed option four, which was presented later, and which is entirely different from the vague question in the survey. Of course, everyone supports ch children, Everyone supports daycare, but that doesn't mean everyone supports dense housing development. And it doesn't mean that the community supports using revenue from housing to provide daycare. Council members should stop referring to this survey saying that it shows any specific support for option before because that was never presented in the survey. Dense housing development is the reason up in arms and providing input not in any way left to us. And yet council seems not to want to hear. The reality is the council distributed a vague and poorly crafted survey two years ago, and then only later revealed some plans that went far beyond what was asked in the survey. And yet you keep offering supposed, uh, citing supposed support for that idea from the survey that preceded it. If you really 
have support for using some of the precious taxpayer owned potential green space for adding dense rental housing, why not survey the residents about that idea now? Ask whether option four with dense housing is even something residents would consider before hiring another consultant to work on an RFP for developers. There is no mandate from the community to proceed with the housing development idea. It's been made clear over and over that it's not supported by the community. You already have your answer that option four is unacceptable, but you don't seem to want to follow it. You don't need to survey and your old survey never even asked the relevant questions. What's more, we have learned that the majority of the students at the current daycare facility are not even Narberth residents. This makes the whole idea of building a new facility and adding dense housing even more outrageous. Option four was not endorsed by the community and does not provide anything to the majority of the community. 20 seconds, Lawrence. Option four is not supported by any survey and should be taken off the table. This council should represent, first and foremost, the interests of not residents, not outside residents or organizations. There should be no consultant, no RFP, and no development on our street. We want to preserve and fully expand green space to the whole Thank you, Lawrence. And we'll reject any attempts to impose other solutions on us. You do not have community support for development on Sabine Avenue and need to stop claiming that you do. All right. Thank you, Lawrence. I, I do want to point out that the, uh, the results of the public survey were presented last year. They were presented at a meeting. Um, I, I see the, the <coughs> report is dated January 12th, uh, 2021. So just to clarify that this was done last year, uh, the presentation on all right, uh, is there more public comment? I'd like to provide public comments here, Samantha. All right, well, sorry, sorry, not, okay, just so you know, that's, that's not, you know, just for future meetings, that's not how it's done. Like I said, it's you raise your hand and then I call on you. Um, I, I, I can't figure out the raise hand button, I'm sorry. Well, I also said you could literally raise your hand, um, but you go ahead, please. Okay, thanks. Good evening. Um, those beautiful pictures shared earlier on the call remind us how special, unique, desirable, and valuable Narworth as a community is. But this was not because of the high density development, it's because of its historical identity and our sense of community. And our public infrastructure is grossly behind. And all of you talked about the yawning for more trees. And it's an ironic reminder on how little green space we have here. And in the case of two, um, 201 Sabine, I believe it's time for council members to take a step back and reflect and listen more thoughtfully for the, uh, to the will of the majority of the community and focus more on the quality of life and the environment. All of us, any one of us here can sell a house and, and leave, but the bigger picture here is to serve many future generations of Norbert residents. Do not allow development to squeeze out the remaining opportunities for green open space that we have left. And I get it, we, we all want more data to make sound decisions and make sure we hear each other out. But at some point, a decision needs to be made for the benefit of the majorities. Yet it appears that it, we're continuing down this long, slow ma march to explore options that they're not already known, they're not acceptable to the majority of the public. And this council is considering bringing commercial and dense housing development to help pay for a private daycare business, providing care to children who are not who are mostly non-residents of the borough. And again, nothing against daycare. Our son went to the same daycare place, but it, it's just the, the vehicle is not right. We believe you should be focusing on more green space to serve the community instead of continuing to spend time and taxpayer money hiring consultant trying to figure out how to squeeze in more housing to pay for private business that might not even align with the benefit of the majority of the borough. And this could could become an appropriate use of tax revenue, even though if the revenue comes from a developer, this is borrowed property, taxpayer property, and the council members should do not represent any private business and do not represent people who live outside of the borough. 
and do not represent the interests of the needs of a small group of rural residents that might benefit from a plan like this. Um, even though the borough has documented its own comprehensive plan and other studies, we suffer from a severe lack of green space and a deficiency of at least 80% versus commonly accepted uh, standards. Take a walk around the neighborhood, talk to the residents and review all the public comments. The message we believe is simple and clear. All right, and, uh, Thank can you, you give your, your name and address, Serena? Serena Chan, 200 Sabine. All right, I don't see any other uh, hands raised digitally or, uh, or physically. All right, uh, so no more hands raised. Uh, let's conclude public comments. Okay, next item up for business are our um, presentation and discussion items. Item 7A, uh, Streeteries. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, so I have not yeah, seen anything from your really. case, so. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have some uh, so dis mildly disappointing news on that is I was expecting from our um, code team uh, the actual you know mock-up of it that council asked for last month. However, I have not received it as of this evening, so I'll get back to them tomorrow and find out what is going on with that. Um, I did talk with the borough solicitor and did confirm with him that to actually implement the aesthetic guidelines borough council would just need to do a resolution before we actually are going to implement it. And like we said, this would be implemented for the next round of outdoor dining permits. Uh, but I mean, obviously sooner is better. So I, uh, so I hope um, that by the, um, you know, by your next meeting, you'll have the resolution from the, uh, so not your next, sorry, not the June 16th meeting, at the July 21st meeting, you'll absolutely have the resolution from the solicitor. And then if I can get by the June 16th meeting, the mock-up of the, um, of the uh, safety barrier we talked about, uh, I'll definitely you know, plan to present that then. Great. I have a question. Uh, in addition to a mock-up there, are they going to be presenting, are they going to be costing this out? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we look forward to hearing more uh, at our next meeting. Thanks. Next item is uh, 7B, Borough Intern. Go ahead, do, you think, uh, or do you want to go ahead? I mean, well, I mean, Michelle Carroll uh, had crafted an internship description, actually reached out to see if she could identify where to um, perhaps publish that in local colleges or even maybe some kind of high achieving. Speak up a little, Sandy. Yeah. High achieving um, high school students or local college students. Um, the office was going to post and see if they could hire someone. The council would need to approve this concept. And we said we would talk about it at this meeting. Mm -hmm. But perhaps Samantha can give us an update on where that application process is. Yeah, so well, we went ahead and started the application process. However, um, I do need Borough Council to formally approve creation of the position and allocation of the funds for it. Um, but we did go ahead and start the advertisement. If Council doesn't want to do it, I mean, we haven't offered a position to anyone or anything like that. So tonight I wanted to make sure that the majority of Borough Council was on board with um, the proposal from Michelle Carroll uh, to bring on an intern. Uh, I had talked to FNA about a budget request of um, $4,800 in salary for the intern. It'll be $20 an hour, 20 hours a week, 12 weeks, $4,800 in total. Um, Michelle doesn't have this on her memo, but I talked to her, Michelle Carroll doesn't have this on her memo, but I spoke with her before about it, and she did confirm the main task that she would envision the intern uh, helping her with, and the intern would report to her, um, would be uh, revamping the borough website I know that's something I've talked oh. off and on with some members of uh, council about, and um, you know it's something that you know that Michelle and I both thought an intern could be a real um, asset that helping us move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the proposal. I'm happy to answer any questions council has. Uh, F and A did uh, talk about it as well, and if uh, um, if a majority of council is uh, in favor of it, then you know Michelle and I will then move forward with uh, with interviews for the position. And then at your June 16th meeting would have an actual, if we have a good candidate, would have someone for you to consider hiring. Okay. 
FNA unanimously supported it, thought this was a really great and extremely affordable way to get some updates on our web page. So, I have a question. When we say, oh, I'm sorry, the program. I, I was just going to say the only comment that I had when we saw this at FNA, and I still have, is I think when we are going out there trying to get applicants, we should be saying, we want you to do some website redesign. Because I think that's going to draw in different people than what this current description is. So I, I think that maybe could be tailored a little more to get what you're really looking for. Yeah, I'm just following up, I was curious because revamping website is um, it's not it's not terribly descriptive. Are we talking about a website redesign? So yes. like you would you would do that offline and then you know just, you exactly. know approve that and then it would be a whole or or taking the existing website and reorganizing it and making it workable with that. Uh, These are no. two very different things. And website redesign sure. is a really significant project, and to do it well takes a, a lot of knowledge and a lot of time. So I should make sure that we really do make sure we get the, a person to keep yeah, doing it. Yeah, it would be the former. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Exciting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree that if that's the main thing we're, we're planning to bring them in for, it should be very clear on the description. Um, and we're going to be looking, you know, not just at say poli sci majors, but you know, somebody with actual computer yeah. skills. Yes. It's a different different group of people. Design um, skills too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, seems like uh, council approves of the if you want a formal uh, um, vote here. I mean, I see no. What, we'll, what we'll do is Michelle um, and I will update the. And sorry, we didn't incorporate that before for the. Uh, part of your packet there, Barbara. Um, I'll have Michelle Carroll update the job description. They explicitly mentioned the uh, web design uh, revamp, redesign project. And we'll, um, and then like I said, we'll probably, you know, depends how the applications and interviews and such go, uh, but as early as, you know, June 16th, we'll come back to council and then we'll need a formal um, vote for the budget expense, the job description, and actually, you know, hiring someone to do that. Okay. So, all right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's move on then to item 7C, which is a uh, skate park grand opening. Who wants um, to leave this? Samantha, do you want to do this or have me do it? Yeah, I'll, um, I'll start and then maybe you can uh, update on the uh, marketing discussion you had. Um, so, include in your packet was a memo on building off task memos about where we're at with the skate park. Um, we have um, moved the scheduled opening date from June 3rd to June 10th. Um, that's because it won't be until tomorrow that our uh, inspector from our liability insurance will be out here to look at the skate park. Uh, speaking with him uh, and his review of all the written materials that we submitted, um, he, you know, he felt very confident that we had done what we needed to do in terms of safety and, and, uh, and liability control. Um, but he'll be out here in person uh, tomorrow to actually see it in person and do his inspection. And assuming all that goes well, um, we're now looking at an opening date of June 10th. Um, you know, Public Works, uh, I didn't have a chance to chat with Jeff, uh, our Public Works manager, right before the meeting. But when I spoke with him yesterday, he told me Public Works was on track to um, have the work they need to have done by the, um, you know, by the end of by tomorrow morning. So I think um, I think that's moving along, and um, the other thing with the skate park I wanted to bring the council's attention is in discussion with staff and officials since our last meeting, uh, there was an idea raised that maybe for an extra uh, layer of security, um, we should ensure that we have uh, security camera coverage of the skate park area, just like how we have for the rest of the back parking lot and the um, dumpster and and the back of. Um, of uh, 80 Windsor. Um, so that's something I asked uh, Public Works to look into because they installed the cameras we currently have back there. And part of our um, building improvement plan that uh, Council approved that infrastructure is working with me on uh, does call for a more permanent, more sophisticated camera system around 
the uh, entire exterior of the um, of the building. Um, but I just think for the skate park, um, it might be a pretty good idea. So, I know when we talked about the possibility of having someone monitoring the skate park, the challenge with that is that, that increased our liability. Mm -hmm. Because like if we're watching it and something goes wrong, it's, it's on us. Does this camera fall into that category or this is after the fact so it wouldn't matter? Right, exactly. Um, no, the, the purpose of, again, the camera is after the fact. It's we wouldn't be watching it in real time necessarily. It would be if an incident occurs, then we would go back and look at what happened and you know, do you know, and then the police could do what they need to do with that information. But I mean, but we don't, for example, I'm trying to just draw a distinction between why we would have it there, but say not on the basketball courts or the baseball field or something like that. You know, what, what, why the skate park and not the others? Yeah, those so, are the distinctions you drew. We drew last time. Yeah. So, um, well, sorry. What's last time? Well, we were just when we were discussing this idea of monitoring things, but we don't monitor anything else. So, I'm just saying, why is there a distinction between the skate park and the other parts of the? Because Walker specifically said this is like any other playground Right, so. Well, no, no, sorry, let me, let me answer it. Sorry, let me speak to that. So, um, I mean, I guess what I would say is the permanent camera system we're looking at, you know, that we have put a deposit down on and all that, that we talked about in infrastructure, is for, like, it may, it would, again, it'd be around the entire exterior area, and so it would see the skate park, it would see you know, the immediate vicinity of the borough building, uh, the basketball court and the skate park. Okay, fine. It's just because this is like the skate park pilot is new and this is a, you know, and we won't have those cameras in until after the skate park pilot opens. But eventually the goal is just to have that coverage. Okay, okay. Let, me, let me ask a, a slight variant on that question. Um, It would only, I take it, it would only be used in case of an incident. It wouldn't be used for us to like That's analyze and determine how the skate park is used or anything like that. Right. I just think there's sort of an expectation. Whenever you have like closed circuit TV systems, you want to. Like, I, I want to be, I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable answering like, I want to make sure I don't give out inaccurate answers to these okay. questions. So maybe it's something we could talk more about later when I can research it if there are these self questions are. That's fine. I, I, just, I just want to make sure that we, that w whatever the expectations are for how this camera, or what, how this footage is used are currently laid out. Yeah. So, so whatever we decide they are, I just, I, I think it should be clear what they are. Have we run, so I do share the concern about liability. I mean, have we run it by Walco, this idea, to make sure it doesn't? Um, no, I haven't run it by the borough solicitor because it's something that plenty of other boroughs and towns do. It's something we've been doing for the back parking lot for the past okay. uh, year almost now. Maybe, maybe I'm overstating it. I just, I just have a, a, I just get, my background is, we're always very careful about having these policies out there about how the, the footage can be used. Can I ask a question more to Ira to clarify? So I think your question that you're saying is like, if we are surveying, if we're, if we're instituting surveillance of people versus mm -hmm. property, we ought to be really clear on how that is used. Is it just for the skate park? Do we need to let people know that they are in fact being, there is surveillance on the basketball courts in the skate park as mm -hmm. part of a larger policy, and we need to understand what is going to trigger that. You, for you us. and I both know from our day jobs that our, in, our, our universities have policies about how this footage could be used. Because it could be a slippery slope. Right, that's all I'm saying. So, <clears throat> when would. Uh, are you saying that this would be in place as part of a larger project and it would take a few months for it to be uh, in place, Samantha, or is I'm not sure I fully understand? All right, so if you read my room, um, okay, so Infrastructure and Council already approved a camera system for the entire exterior of the building. Okay. Uh, and Six months ago? 
Yeah. And the thought process here is that because the pilot is new and because we we are going to have I mean we are going to have a permanent system. This is a temporary stopgap. Just you know, just because the skate park pilot is a new thing, and it was like more just like a nice to do sort of idea. Um, and again, like I just I don't want to I don't know I, I'm really I want to be really I feel like I've been a little too loose slipped already in this conversation, and I feel like I feel like if council has these concerns, uh, I need an opportunity to research them because I don't want something quoted back in my face that. Was that an effort to try and answer a question on the spot? It, that's totally fine. I, I just was raising the concern that there are that these systems tend to generate privacy concerns, and, and so I just thought it would be just good if we have some sense of what, what the rules are. Uh, yeah, I mean, all, all, it, all it said in the packet was that you uh, you were looking into the feasibility of a remote camera, so there, there weren't really details sorry, for us to look at. Sorry, so I, I misremembered what I remember. It's about. okay, I mean, because I, I was just checking because I wasn't sure. So let's, should we just discuss this again, you know, later on? Because it's not imminent, right? This is something that's medium term. Um, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll look more into it in the next two weeks, but I, I think this is really important. Okay. And if I can bring this back up to council at June 16, once I've had a chance to address the concerns raised. Okay, uh, So I believe, I'm not 100% sure, because I can't always remember everything that has happened, but I've been at the table, but I believe when you approved the broader camera system, that was before my time on council. It doesn't, doesn't ring a bell with me as something that, that um, I was part of an active decision on, but I could be wrong. Anyway, what I'm thinking of, though, is that um, presumably we've already thought through some of this because that, you know, the, I would say even the temporary ones that we've got out that are, you know, surveying the back of the library building and mm -hmm. the, the yard all have the same questions about what are we doing with those and what are the privacy concerns around that. So I would assume that we already have thought through some of that or if we haven't, that this should be a wider um, process and, and the policy to set, just to make sure we're covering everything. It's not just like specific to the skate park, but, you know. Yeah, I can look back on my notes when we talked about that time and what conversations I had with the solicitor that. Yeah, because yeah. I would think it's all it's all the same piece, really. It's just. Is it a, is it a topic to give to the police? Uh, no, no I, think, I guess it would probably be something that John yeah. could yeah. very easily write it. And, and it's just an yeah. internal policy. That's what I would um, it's pretty, okay. you know, it would be pretty And as usual, so, other municipalities probably have policies. Yeah, I don't it's an internal long. policy. This yeah. is to ensure that people with access internally yeah. don't misuse it right. for some reason. Yeah. And it's like an employment policy, yes. essentially. Mm -hmm. All right. right. So let's, let's plan to come back to this in two weeks uh, with more input from uh, Sister Walker. <clears throat> um, any more about the skate park? Yeah. The other, um, really, the other big news is just really regarding I, I, around the. I'm sorry, sorry Michelle. Yeah, I, I cut you off. I, no, I'm sorry. I just, I just want to say, you know, I think it's great to ask John about this. I, I have to be honest with you. I mean, I'm taking, doing a degree in privacy and all that. I have to tell you, you don't really have an expectation of privacy in public places. You, you really don't. Um, but that said, I'd love to have an internal, pro you know, procedure in place so that we feel good about our own internal processes. But it's not like there's some massive security concern when you're walking across the park and somebody takes a picture of your video it's kind of like you're in public so that's all <laughs> I, think, I just think that people have a right to know how I think we need to speak up folks yeah. 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 that's all we're saying Moving back to uh, skate park specific issues. Sure. So I guess sort of the other big update, a little bit of a lighter uh, conversation, hopefully, is um, um, you know the conversations around the marketing and promotion of it. And I've had a great opportunity to meet since this memo was written uh, with uh, Harry Quaid, Rebecca Quaid, David Bordeaux, and uh, our council vice president, and talk through some ideas about. Uh, you know, about, oh, and I'm sorry, Cindy has also uh, been a part of that uh, conversation as well. Um, talk through uh, some ideas for marketing and promotion of the skate park. 
and I think there's some really exciting uh, ideas for it. Uh, there's a flyer that I believe will be uh, going out tomorrow that will talk a lot about uh, the different sort of events and sort of things you want to have going on with the grand opening. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, some of this is still being finalized, but we talked about having a best trick contest, we talked about having a raffle, um, we talked about having, uh, you know, some food and drink for sale there. Um, you know, and so I, I don't know, I think it's going to be a really fun day and a really um, fun event. And I think it's going to be a really good opportunity for the borough. And, and I think we're going to see a lot of really happy people there. Uh, um, but if council has any other suggestions or any particular thoughts on marketing, feel free to, you know, throw them out there to me between, you know, now and Monday, probably. <laughs> and, uh, and get that done. But otherwise, I said, flyer will be going out very soon. That will um, market a lot of the uh, stuff going out with the proposed grand opening. I think the one marketing thought I had was that if anybody has a thought of selling things there more than like once, you know, if you want to come out and have your Girl Scouts or have whatever, go out there once and sell things, that's reasonable. But we can't, you know, we don't want people to be out there all the time without us being aware of it. I agree. The um, group touched on that topic very briefly today, and it's one that, um, that I uh, yeah, definitely have some thoughts on, and, and are going to uh, have some more uh, more to come to Borough Council with that. Okay. Great. All right. Any other uh, discussion? Anything else? So I think pending the. Uh, report from the inspector. Uh, sounds like we're good to go. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Let's move on to the uh, Master Park Plan Ad Hoc Committee. Shall we want to go? No? Um, well, I can start by going over the memo that I, sure. uh, that I provided. Go ahead. Um, so I tried to take the information council had discussed at its previous meeting, and then I also took the um, the parking study uh, task force sort of document that was put together before my time to like kind of get that group you know sorted out and um, put together this uh, this document that you have in your packet. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you know council and, and myself and I were on the same page about how to. Uh, you know how to move forward with uh, the master park planning process. So, I welcome any questions or comments or thoughts or suggestions on uh, on this document and, and the plan for moving forward on this. So, I'd like to, to suggest that we look primarily at the uh, the process. I think the composition of the committee, given. Um, changes that are going on right now in the Parks and Recreation Board, we may want to rethink. Um, so I, I would recommend that we, we talk mostly about the, uh, the other aspects of this proposal, like what the committee would do rather than who would be members of the committee. Anybody have any? <laughs> <laughs> any comments? Barbara? Um, the one thought that I had is just to make sure that we're clear what we mean when we say a plan for the parks because when I hear that I think we're talking only about outdoor spaces and maybe that is what we are talking about but you can talk to some other people and when they think of parks they think oh uh, you know there's a rec center in my park or oh there's a there's a, a an eating pavilion, you know, or there's bathrooms, or there's I don't know, anything like that. So I guess I just would want us to be clear in what we're asking this committee to do. You know, is it is it just outdoor space, or do we want them to, you know, think more broadly than that and and have uh, suggestions that. You know, you wouldn't necessarily say, oh, park, but something that would be in a park. And that's my, was my one question to make it clear to them. So um, we have a, 
a bullet point uh, to balance active and passive recreational needs and uses. So we could also add uh, potential need for community space to that bullet point. Or, or maybe something about uh, indoor and outdoor activities, you know, to, to, or to, to consider whether, I don't know, something like that, you know, to, to even, to just think about it. Could, something like, this could include indoor and outdoor space. Well, let's just and say we want to incorporate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I think I think words are about a little bit yeah. to make that yeah. more clear. Everyone agrees this should be. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see now it's here, so. I mean, I wouldn't put it on the bullet point list because that's, those are things the committee must do. Right. Consider these things, but I think expanding the definition somewhere in here to make sure, make it clear, parks planning can can also include right. indoor recreational facilities. That's right. right. That's I mean, what I, was, I would expect them to, but it can't hurt to. Well, not and to, I'm just saying, if you don't say it, it, they might not think of it. They may well, I mean, it's not like this committee is going to go running off. Or, I know, but yeah, still. There's been a lot of back and forth, but I think it's a good idea. All right, uh, Cindy. So I guess my suggestion was, do we want to pause on this actually and kind of wordsmithing this and looking at it until we constitute um, and fill some of the, the open seats we now have on Parks and Rec, given that we did decide we're not going to even apply for that planning grant until next year, and you will all be happy about the decision when we share Samantha's grant schedule <laughs> with you all to see how incredibly mm -hmm. overwhelmed that is. I guess my suggestion is um, the former Parks and Rec really kind of made this recommendation for an ad hoc position. Do we want to redevelop Parks and Rec, fill these vacant seats, and then revisit this with well, members and fresh eyes? That's what Samantha just said. That, or, or we should, or Fred suggested we would just focus. We're just going to focus on the descriptive part that described what the what the master parks planning. Organization will do not who it's composed of. Not that's really something that's that something that's going to come from council, no matter who does the best reports. But it has to, just like the, just like the ad hoc parking committee didn't decide its own agenda and didn't decide its own scope of work. Council so really has to give that guidance. I, I would back it up farther. Perhaps the parks and rec says, you know what? The, it was a recommendation to an ad hoc. Uh, this isn't necessarily. No, let's, 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 can I just finish? Can I show? Uh, uh, right. Do we want to fill these seats and say, hey, this was the recommendation of the last board? Do you still agree with that? Or is that something that you feel as if the Parks and Rec Committee can do? I'm now saying the opposite. Go ahead. I'm saying, we're not talking about filling the seats now. I'm not talking about right. So the, the thing would be that we were just talking about focusing on the process and deliverables part, because that would be true whether it's an ad hoc committee, whether, whether, the, whether, whether the Parks and Rec revisits this and says, you know, we thought that was a great recommendation and we still endorse that, even though we're composed of different members, so appoint a committee. Or Parks and Rec says, you know, this is a different board and we're not so sure we do endorse that recommendation anymore for ad hoc. The process of doing all those pieces would be the same. So that's why I'm probably suggesting just focus on that piece. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm suggesting we just pause. And, and we don't even go into looking at deliverables. That I, I would suggest perhaps we can. This doesn't have to be done right now. Maybe we can fill those seats. No, it doesn't. But it's, it's in the packet. And Samantha's so just sort of asking for our feedback. Sure, like, that's my can answer. Would you like to pause? We have a lot going on. Would you like to pause this? I, I would feel like this is something that we could probably pause. Given so I would say this. I mean, the the project schedule outlined here calls for the responsible body. To really kind of start meeting uh, like around September or so to really make sure they have all their you know ducks in a row and can really get it down to work and and especially if they decide they need any professional support so they can have everything they need in place like January and then have a full year to be able to work on it and get it approved by council before you know before the beginning of 2024 when you know when we all really have to start working on that grant application um, so I would say this, I mean, I would really like to try and stick to that schedule, whether it's forming an ad hoc committee or whether it's having a reconstituted Parks and Rec committee do it, just as long as whatever body that is is ready September to get rolled Okay. And if we're going to form a new body, <laughs> you know, I mean, we've all been at this table long enough now to know that it's June, but like by the time we advertise and pick people and figure that out, it's not going to be, it can be pretty close to September, probably. Yes. Uh, 
or vice versa by the time, you know, for Parks and Rec, by the time we accept these resignations and advertise and bill and, and reorganize. All right, so realistically, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. Ryan. Well, I, I'm also a bit concerned about the workload. You know, I mean, we have the parking committee, which is going to go on for the foreseeable future. We have two council members appointed to this. Yeah, we're like running out of council members to staff these committees. We have someone on the town square uh, committee from council. You know, so I'm just a bit concerned about the workload for the council, but also for the staff. Okay, so I mean, what I was saying was Parks and Rec is going to take some time to get organized again, to, to be able to you know, have a, a recommendation from the new committee. I mean, that's probably August, right? We want to have the whole, we want to have a new, you know. Yeah, we're going to have to, yeah. So if we have their recommendation in August and we sort of finalize this, then we're going to start in September, it's a little tough. Maybe we should push this to October if we do that. I mean, would, would we like to have Samantha in a position to apply for grants from 2024 so that we have a master parks plan? Because if, I mean, is that, I mean, because I'm hearing like maybe maybe it's just too much. Maybe we want to just scrap that and not do this master parks plan and not apply for grants in 2024. That's a different discussion. But if we do, this is kind of the timeline, the way that Samantha sees it, it would work. So. I, I think that since we have a light agenda, it's not a bad time to talk about the process and deliverables because they will they will hold true whether there are council members on an ad hoc group or, or, or whether it's whether the park new the constituted rec board says that they would rather they would like to take this over and don't want to abide the previous recommendation. It still seems like it can't hurt to talk about it now because we have to provide it and asked for feedback. I don't have any feedback. I mean, I think I think this is great. It's a nice, concise the description. I like your addition, Barbara. But um, I mean, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't feel like I need to visit revisit this process of deliverables. I'd feel comfortable saying whatever happens procedurally, with the composition of the board or appointments, I'm comfortable with the process of deliverables as you put them in this draft. Yeah, I think that's really. I mean, the crux of the question is is when. Do we want to be able to do improvements at the park? And do we want grant funding for those improvements? Um, you know, it could be the plan, you know, doesn't get done. It could be something where, you know, the plan doesn't get done until later in 2024. And, you know, we go ahead and start some smaller work or something like that as part of, you know, just the regular for a budget and then apply, you know, for grant funding at the beginning of 2025. It's, I mean, it's really just, a, I mean, a question of how, uh, of how soon you want to do it. Like, um, like I, I feel okay being able to apply for that, you know, grant um, in the beginning of 2024. I mean, I just went through a master park plan, like, you know, not even like two years ago. Um, so, I mean, the process is still kind of fresh in my mind. And um, I, I'd like to think I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to take and involve and um, I think part of the reason too of recommending that this not really be going until like the fall is the town square project, the heavy design component of that, um, you know, because I think almost everyone here got to attend the uh, meeting number three with uh, Simone Collins will be kind of, you know, will be winding down by that point. Um, so I mean, maybe we set a starting goal uh, that we wouldn't start this until, you know, the town square. Uh, you know, design work is done, and that uh, you know our our primary goal would be to be in a position to apply for a DCNR park development grant by April 2024. But if we don't if we don't meet that goal, it won't you know, you know we won't it won't be the end of the world. Like we'll mm -hmm. go ahead and start improving what we can improve at the park, and you know when the grant comes around again, we'll apply for it then. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think park improvements are a, are a priority for the borough. I mean, you know, every, there's they're a priority, so it's important to, to get our ducks in a row and get ready to you know, put ourselves in a position to get grant funding for them. Um, I think that the, the the heavy lift is really going to be next year when they're working on the plan rather than sort of figuring out logistics, which is 
probably less challenging than actually you know talking to all the stakeholders. And um, the biggest thing I need the group to do, in my opinion, and the prior to the end of the year, is just let me know what sort of budget requests they would have for any professional support in 2023. And then in 2023, yeah, the actual work would happen. And you know, depending on how much professional support you decide you want, you know, I'll admit when I did the one in New Britain, there was a considerable amount of external professional support. And really, the meetings there were, um, you know, like the the uh, the steering committee didn't actually like really write any of the actual plan or anything like that. It was, you know, there was a meeting every two weeks or so between the steering committee and the um, and the you know, professional support team uh, to kind of check on how things were going, review drafts, provide suggestions. And um, there were a handful of um, big, you know, town hall style public meetings. Um, but again, it was the steering committee attended and, and helped here and there with it, but largely the professional design team organized that. And then again, with the stakeholder, um, there were stakeholder interviews kind of similar to what we're doing with Town Square. Again, it was the uh, professional support team who uh, who made the questions and actually did the interviews, and the steering committee just helped create the questions and um, and you know sat in on on uh, the interviews. Uh, so um, I hope people don't think of it as the level of involvement. And to give a lot of credit to the parking committee, as like the parking committee, it's been like 100 percent. You know, the part, I mean, thankfully we have Nelson Nygaard to rely on, and that past work that was already done. Um, but in terms of, of you know having to really actually do things with that information, you know the parking committee is having to do all of that. So I would say the commitment level would probably be less than what the parking committee is is doing right now, and probably more than than you know than what we're doing with the town square because the town square is just one location versus our whole park system. So. Answer your concerns, Rob. Yeah. Okay. So, I think you know Barbara's made that point about the inter, you know, the possible uh, inside uses of the park, possible buildings at the park to be included in the uh, the, the charge to the committee. Is, uh, is everyone comfortable with? Waiting to determine the makeup of the committee until we have a conversation with the, uh, the new Parks and Rec board. Mm -hmm. As long as we're comfortable with the charge, that makes sense to me because the new Parks and Rec board won't know whether they can agree to it or not if they don't know what the charge it's is. Just, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Some sense of the commitment. All right. right. So let's let's plan to return to this uh, either July or August once we've had a chance to. Uh, once we've got a. Uh, a recreation, a Parks and Recreation Board that is uh, once again uh, ready to uh, discuss this issue. Okay. Any other comments about the uh, Master Park Plan? Okay. Well, let's go ahead with commercial fire inspection fees. Uh, yeah, just, just a word of thanks to Samantha for bringing this project home. It's been in the works for a while, and um, it's a real benefit to the community, you know, just to make sure these buildings are safe. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually kind of embarrassed to realize that I never actually brought this to full council <laughs> until now. Because um, it actually was a little while back that public health and safety really uh, kind of uh, worked through this concern. Um, so big picture, um, in Norbert Borough, there currently is no commercial fire inspection program. It's a relatively common thing in other municipalities. And in fact, our existing um, uh, fire code uh, gives us the ability to do these commercial fire inspections. Um, so there, it doesn't require any ordinances or anything, or anything like that from Borough Council. It's just the main thing I wanted to make sure of was, A, that Borough Council was aware that, you know, that we're thinking of doing this, and B, um, you know, the other common component is there is usually some sort of fee charge. And, uh, you know, public health and safety had a good 
um, discussion on you know how we should handle that, and so I wanted to bring it up to um, her council before we, because we're in a position really to start doing it if we want to. Um, before we start doing it, I want to see how council felt about any fees and about the program in general before we get going on it. So my, my usual question is, do, do we know what Lower Marion charges for fire inspection fees? Uh, let's see here. I do not offhand, but I bet I could find out relatively quickly. I know, I mean, it's not exactly a fair comparison. I mean, in my last job, it was done based on square footage, um, whereas this is a flat rate fee. Um, and the square footage costs range anywhere from $100 to $1,000. Um, but something that would be like $1,000 was like the shopping center, for example. Like the vast majority of businesses were like $100, $200 kind of thing. Um, yeah, we ended up proposing a flat fee just because most businesses in Narber are, you know, there aren't, as far as I'm, I've only been here a little over a year, but I don't know of any giant shopping centers in Narber. <laughs> most of our businesses seem to kind of be the same sort of square footage. Actually, I remember. I remember when when we updated our fee schedule uh, at the end of last year. That me and our code enforcement officer uh, Evan and my assistant Michelle had looked at the fees in Lower Marion and some other places. I think we looked at for fire as well, but uh, I'm pulling up their website right now to check on that. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, no, no. That's a, very, that's a very fair question. And it's one that I can relatively quickly find the answer to. So, um, yeah, I'll just say while I'm looking this up that um, I'm grateful to Cindy for helping um, set me and the fire marshal and the code officer up with a meeting with the um, Harvard Business Association. And we made you know their membership aware of uh, this proposed plan and handed out the self-inspection uh, checklists and clothes in the council packet and um, you know people seem pretty understanding of it uh, we also do plan uh, to send out a direct mailer to you know because not every business in the borough is at that meeting just so everyone is aware before we start doing them and then of course as we talk about other things you know this building would be the first building that would go through uh, the fire inspection to make sure we're in compliance with all the uh, fire code. Uh, I cannot find it easily on the American site. Maybe you can look. Seriously, yeah, <laughs> I'm looking all over the place. Uh, I, I wonder if we need to do this right now, though. That's, it's right. Right. that's not true. easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it's not, yeah, if it's, it's not, it's not obvious. So on here now. Well, and the other thing about the fees is that the fees should recoup the cost of doing the inspection and the staff estimated the yeah. numbers that on that basis. So even if Lower Marion's numbers are different, that could just be that their costs are to do it or different. Yeah, and that's true. And when I asked Kevin to give me a fee, I asked him how long do you think it's going to take you to do for an average property and average business in Narber. How long is it going to take you to do the fire inspection, including you know the time to schedule the appointment, to do the inspection, to write up the you know report? Um, and the number he came to get into was um, make sure I put the right number on the packet. Two hundred. Two hundred. Annually and three hundred every other year. Yeah. That's not the hours. That's oh, I thought you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's on the sheet. No, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does sound right to me, though. I do believe we have proposed $200 for right. annual businesses and $300 for, mm -hmm. every, for businesses that are every other year. And like things that are more of a fire danger, like like restaurants, would be inspected every year. Whereas like things that aren't open to the public, like someone who has, I'm making something up here, like an accounting office or something, uh, you know, would be every other year. Yeah, and you know, it's, I'm just pleased that this also includes the apartment building, yes. you know, the common right. areas. So you can imagine the stairwells yeah. with lighting, um, sprinkler systems, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, thanks this for pointing that out. Um, what, what is, what's, what's the next steps of this? And I think this is a great, I mean, I think this is like long overdue. Do we need long to do anything <laughs> to make this happen? <laughs> so uh, there really are two things. Number one, I wanted to make sure there wasn't any unknown umbrage on council about it. Um, you know, as, as we found out tonight, that's not always the case. So I like to be sure about that. <laughs> and then number two um, was I will need council to actually approve uh, formally approve an update fee schedule that would incorporate fees for this program. Um, so why don't, um, since this is a work session and not a business meeting, why don't I, between now and the 16th, um, you know, get some more information on just making sure that even though our fee is based on our cost, to make sure that we're not being, you know, us and our businesses aren't being price gouged or anything like that. Um, and I can get that information on what it's like in some of the towns around here. And uh, that way council will make sure they're making the right decision on the six seats for fees. Appreciate that. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, that's it for our presentation discussion items. We do have uh, one set of action items, uh, 8A, uh, which is to uh, accept uh, some resignations from the Parks and Recreation Board uh, of members uh, Jennifer Marinigo, Jonathan Peterson, uh, Melissa O'Connor, and Krista Stein. Can we accept them as a block or do we are we required to do it individually? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I think you're probably, again, I'm not the board solicitor, but I think you're probably fine to accept them as a block. Okay. I'd like to, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, these uh, Parks and Recreation Board members uh, for their service to the community. Is there any discussion uh, of this? Okay. Make a motion and a second. Yes, there needs to be a motion uh, and a second. I move to accept the resignation from Parks and Rec Board of Jenner for Moriago, Jonathan Peterson, Melissa O'Connor, and Chris Staff. Effective immediately. Second. Okay. And now, is there any uh, further discussion of this topic? Okay, the, the motion is to accept the resignations from the Parks and Recreation Board of Jennifer Marinigo, Jonathan Peterson, Melissa O'Connor, and Krista Stone. All those in favor of accepting the resignations? Okay, uh, opposed? Uh, all right, uh, the motion passes. <coughs> That is our only action item. Uh, let's go with the committee reports. Um, okay. So Infrastructure. Yeah. Do you want me to start? Well, <laughs> done. Right. Uh, I don't. There's not a lot to report. I'll just let you know. We talked about the sidewalk inspection program, and I don't know if we've talked about that a lot here in council or not. Um, we got a. Um, our code enforcement officer did a sort of estimate of, estimate of the scope of this program and what it would what it would entail and um, uh, found that they estimate that based on their sort of sampling of sidewalks and borough, there's about going to be about a 50 percent pass fail rate for to meet the sidewalk standards like if you were doing UNO inspections and so this is going to end up being a very very substantial um, commitment of time and hours and, and funds and so um, our manager's recommendation was to do this in, in a phased manner um, roll this out. I don't exactly know that we have a schedule, precise schedule at this time, um, but that the, the recommendation was to begin um, with the 5A downtown district and have uh, commercial, I guess, uh, property owners there um, do their sidewalk work first as a trial to see how it goes. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to say about that. Um, sorry, I mean, yeah, please. I didn't want to emphasize as well, same with the fire inspection, the borough owned properties would also be some of the first uh, inspected. Oh, yes. And, um, oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, right, yeah, I forgot about that. That's important. The borough owned properties first, but this, as far as rolling it out past the borough properties, we talked about starting by day. <laughs> Can I ask a question though? So, when you evaluate the 5A district for the sidewalks, would you evaluate, or would there be an evaluation of the shade tree? And I say, for an example, um, there was a store where there's a beautiful shade tree, the sidewalk was cracked, okay. the business then fixed the sidewalk, but in fact did not replace mm -hmm. one of the shade trees. So mm -hmm. how does 
Yeah. How are trees incorporated in that the five eight district sidewalk? That's a good conversation we're, we need to have with J Tree right. Commission. So we, yeah, we're going to okay. loop them in. So that's on our radar. Okay. Oh, okay. In our new sidewalk ordinance that we did in preparation for this program, there is some language about um, you know about roots and trees and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I do think there's a separate conversation that I'm, uh, I've been working to have with. Um, the state tree commission about how we follow up from our tree inventory from a few years ago and and yeah and do that inspection and replacement work right so i guess my question was <coughs> the business doesn't have the authority to say well i'm not planting a tree here because it's just going to crack my sidewalk anyway so there's this balance of it is the right of way so can we say no we are we are requiring yeah. a shade tree, yeah. but yet you're responsible if it yeah. takes up the sidewalk. Yeah, that we that's that authority is already in the ordinance in the shade tree to plant in the right of way. Okay. But we, we can't tell them you have to plant a tree. We can well, merely we can't. We can't. The, the yeah. borough can plant it. Well, no, no, no. We, I mean, we want it. I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying I haven't thought about. Well, let me backtrack on that. I'll be honest. But, Again, I don't want to say something off the cuff that could okay. come back to haunt me later. Let's, let's, All I'll say for tonight is the borough does have the legal authority to require people to plant shade trees in the right way of their property. Right. We did discuss that. And I'm not going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> or anyway. But we, I don't, guess, we don't have plans to do this at the moment. No, the only okay. plan at the moment is to inspect the site. We, we are not planning to, to right. ask people, uh, to, no to demand plan. that people plant trees. I uh, yeah, think we're going to be very clear for the recording and everyone on here. There is currently no plan whatsoever to make people plant shade trees. And if there were ever such a suggestion, it would come before Borough Council before any action would be taken. I mean, we think it's a delightful idea to plant shade trees, and we encourage it, but uh, that is the extent of uh, our current. Since there's two Shade Tree Commission members here present, can I ask a question? In a situation like that where you're planting in a relatively small area, like under a sidewalk, are, are there are there tree um, varieties that you can plant that will not, that they're pretty much guaranteed to not cause damage to the sidewalks because of the way they, their size and where the roots grow? I mean, or, or yeah. if, if you tell, if you have people plant trees in those, in those limited areas, like you know, like an open area within the sidewalk, is it just inevitably going to damage the sidewalk? Don't we recognize um, our shade tree member, one of our shade tree members. Uh, okay. <laughs> in a tight situation like that, we typically install. Sorry, speak up. We would install a root barrier typically okay. in, a, in a tight situation like that, which is like a two-foot piece of plastic that is inserted mm -hmm. next to the curb or along the planting side. And encouraging the roots to, to tap down or, or spread. And that's supposed to be pretty effective. Okay. So you can, I mean, if they're, if they're pretty effective, this means that you're not going to wind up having to replace the sidewalk again within a generation or two. I mean, it's going to be fine. Maybe if the tree gets enormous at some point, but you know. Okay. Sure. Is that accurate or? I'm sorry, I didn't get that accurate. accurate. Uh, we, I mean, we don't, we don't know how long, we don't but it, it's, it's like the most we can do to mitigate. Okay. Yeah. Like eventually the trees may cause yeah. the sidewalk to buckle, but this will limit the effect. I think this will be a really good conversation for council, separate from the sidewalk inspection program. Once I have a chance to talk more with the Shade Tree Commission about the tree inventory and our comprehensive plan and, and so on and so forth. Uh, there was another comment at the infrastructure meeting that came from a public comment, which was, if some, if, a, if, a, if a, a resident sees a really badly cracked piece of sidewalk, they can report it to the borough office, and that 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 one can be inspected out of out of sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also starting this completely off track here. This is the last kind of comment I have on this. It's just because. Um, Carol Marie is on this meeting right now. I, this is, I don't really want her to expect a response. I just want to let you know that uh, the contractor that we had doing our sidewalk work before is coming back out to do the sidewalk work that you brought to our attention. So thank you for that. Okay. Okay, so that was the subject we talked about sidewalks. We um, Samantha Brees briefed us on the Hanson Court streetlight pillars. You might remember um, this goes back quite a ways to 2020. 
when a resident was concerned about um, damage, the pillars were, I think the, the, like the mortar on them, was, the masonry was damaged. I guess we agreed to take responsibility for the pillars. And so it's kind of gone on and on. What we, we decided to do is we wanted to sort of replace them with street lights. Like yeah, we're doing LED street lights everywhere. As it turns out, there were some residents that weren't crazy about that, probably more to the point. Um, Samantha's gotten cost estimates, so the cost to repair the masonry on the existing pillars, because I guess the electricity works, um, is about $7,000. The, the cost to replace them completely would be like probably north of $12,000. Um, she thinks the life expectancy would be about the same, and then on balance, it makes sense to just go forward with the masonry repairs. On the infrastructure committee um, said, you know, we would follow that advice and recommendation. I don't know if anybody has a contrary opinion. I brought up, and I kind of want to say it again with full counsel here, I can't speak to the wisdom of deciding to take responsibility at that time. I don't know. I think now that I've sort of gone back and looked at the pillars and, and the wall that goes around, and it's important, they kind of look like they're one and the same thing, made of the same materials. And I, I think I just want to make it clear that although we did take responsibility for those pillars, and so you pointed out, like, if somebody drove a car into the pillar after it's fixed, our liability insurance would cover it because we did that work. The rest of those walls and that other masonry, it's really not our responsibility. I mean, I'm pretty, fairly certain that's private property that was put in by the developer who created and support. So I just want to kind of say that publicly. Yes? Um, so I was actually against taking responsibility for the lights outside of the standard street lights and was obviously um, outvoted on that because one of the points I said then, okay, so we are signing on now for maintaining every private street or lanes. No, we're not. <laughs> well, if Lantern Lane comes and says, hey, I heard you did this for Hampton Court, we want our pillars re mortared or then is that, I mean, is that what we're going to do? Or, and, and everybody Don't said, yeah, choice. that's what we're going to do. Uh, I think that's a bad precedent. Um, I think that's a bad precedent. But I suppose that ship has sailed. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> so you, you had a question. I don't. I don't think we are therefore committed to take responsibility for private property every every, every time it comes up. Okay. As I a mean, result of making one discrete decision in one particular. So do you think you know that there's no question? This Hampton Court. You know, we are not in perpetuity going to maintain this. That this was a, oh. a kind of a one time. You came uh, to us. So like I would not object to a council. Great yeah, we, we've actually like taken possession of them, as I understand. Like yeah. there was some legal those, agreements those that were signed, so there yeah. there are now. now ours, but yeah. not, now ours. not yeah. the rest of it. Just the right, right, right. Just the street. Right. 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 I mean, I think I've stuck my foot in my mouth like four times already tonight. I, 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 I was, I was, I was I make it five. I'll <laughs> say, Cindy. I mean, I don't have a vote. I agree with everything you just said yeah. about the situation. Yeah, um, it's All right, I'll take some ownership here. I was in charge of infrastructure when the case was made. That, you know that we should take charge of the, the basically the lights went out and uh, there was a lot of concern about the lights going dark yeah. and uh, you know so we decided that street lights are a public good right. the borough should take charge or the borough should take charge right. of these street lights and as a result we voted to do so and we've made some legal accommodations to ensure that we actually do so in this case we own the street lights and we need to make you know we need to decide what to do with them right because it is the street lights are an important like public safety measure and so we thought rather than letting lights go dark and people get injured we'll take responsibility of the lights but now that we are because it's just more practical like realizing that the lights actually don't need to be replaced i'm not really sure how this happened but um then it's just more cost effective to sort of patch up the mortar and, and the electrical is already working but we're not taking, you know, that doesn't mean that we're responsible to repair the walls and you know, other, or, you know, land or it's, or, not, it's not a precedent that requires us to. to so I actually think that's important then to frame that and spell that out, right? Obviously, we want lights because it's a safety issue. Yeah. So, really, what you're saying is we were looking at tax dollars and it was, um, we were better stewards of tax dollars if we. If we fix what was currently there versus what the standard borough rates would be. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, it's not a policy. Rather, we were just beautiful from an SNA standpoint. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if we need to put that in a letter and provide it to the residents, or if we're comfortable that 
stating it here in the public record is enough. But well, that, given, given that they given okay. that they were getting upset at our prior proposal, I think we should communicate it to them. Um, that's our current decision is going to be to fix what's there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's what they want. I believe yeah. that's what the residents want. I think so. so I think it should work out fine. Okay. And we did receive actually a contribution from uh, at least one yeah, Hanson Corps the, resident not, towards supporting the lights. Uh, we did from three actually, but I'm going to have to follow up with them because the contribution was originally solicited for the purpose of doing the replacement. So I'll have to see if they still would want to put that contribution towards repair instead. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, we do, do, you are going to be bringing to us in it that um, quite, um, a budget co a budget um, adjustment for this the acquisition of snow equipment this year, right? But I don't think we're doing that now. On uh, that's uh, June 16th. Right, so that will be coming to 50, but we did get a, a pretty comprehensive briefing from our public works director, and I'm sure we'll discuss it again. And uh, he's really done a lot of research into what equipment is most cost effective and what's necessary. He has reached out, talked to the EAC about the possibility of moving away from the gas powered sidewalk room and the EAC uh, agrees and feels that there is no alternative that would uh, accomplish our, our purposes at this time to a gas powered one. Um, we also talked about the bridge, bridge construction inspector. We have to have a third party inspector, as we know, um, we're required to do that because it's federally funded. Um, so what we did at our meeting is we just approved the, um, I guess they sort of, we have to approve an advertisement because it has to go out to bid. It's pretty much boilerplate. We really don't have a lot of discretion about this. Um, there was one area where we had discretion. We were allowed to sort of wait four different categories, which the sort of standard boilerplate you like. It was like specific experience, general construction experience, um, quality control, and um, commitment to timely completion of projects. So we bumped up the last one. Because <laughs> that was only 15% waiting. We were like, no, timely completion is very important to all of us. And uh, that is uh, pretty much all that we did in our meetings. That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, finance administration. Um, thanks. Everybody has access to the borough treasury report, and I just want to underscore one point that we discussed was with the police pension investment update. Uh, we did lose seven and a half percent in March due to the stock market trends. Like everybody else who you know held their breath and opened up their four hundred ones. Um, Samantha is keeping a really close contact and we'll evaluate if our contribution needs to change in the future, potentially in 2024 if the market doesn't recover. Um, but FNA was confident that this is on Samantha's radar. She's going to keep us updated um, as need be. Anything to add to that? No, that's great. Okay, often if you do. Um, uh, Samantha also brought to us an estimate for $22,000 for the office reception area. Um, and we discussed moving beyond the bid threshold, under the bid threshold, to a, a more reasonable um, price. We saw a drawing presented in the packet that wasn't as clear to all of us, um, but we really articulated through FNA that a, a design for the office reception area. And just for some context and background, remember there were some concerns with insurance and safety issues that we wanted to, of course, meet those benchmarks for safety. But we didn't want a design that didn't reflect our communication policy approach. And we want to be very careful that we don't see a project design where there's that transactional approach to government because we've gone so far um, that we don't want to move our built environment back to a communication policy and practice that isn't reflective of us um, in 2022. So um, we are confident that the manager I'm just taking a look at that and we'll bring us something um, the revised budget and with that communication approach in mind. Yeah, that's very well done. Okay. Um, we also discussed a meeting recording policy. There was a desire that all public meetings be recorded, uh, commissions, committees, etc. Um, it is a recommendation that we have a computer dedicated for the OWL and that there is a one-page instruction guide. So the expectation is that no borough staff or elected official in fact has to go to every meeting, but rather committees and commissions have that computer, they have the owl, they have the one-page tutorial. Um, this is a cost estimate for the security and the computer of about $500, and FNA unanimously approved that. Um, we would need to do a public meeting policy to be resolved. Uh, to kind of codify that public meeting policy. 
Um, we also asked them what will we do with the recorded meetings, and that is something that could be saved on SharePoint and then linked from our webpage. So that's all housed not on the NCA YouTube, but rather really directly on our SharePoint site. Um, so I guess, I mean, we're not voting on this now, but I guess we can talk about is there, is there any, any suggestions? Um, I assume that won't pose any problems for our storage. I mean, okay. Everybody's okay with that, and we'll yep, handle those details with office and staff. Um, and we'll, I can connect with Waco to talk about a resolution. Yeah, and I already um, gave them a heads up on it, um, but definitely feel free to reach out. To okay, me. perfect. Um, the next is, and this was brought to our attention, um, the good old Huxper permit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and how we do special event policies. You know, we, we are a town of beloved community organized events and we don't want to um, squash that with bureaucracy and yet we want to find a sweet spot in the middle where we can both protect the borough and yet encourage and support community members um, when doing these great events. So what we, we really agreed is that the Hubster permit does not apply to all special events. Right? So for example, um, Earth Day, if you are selling plants, for example, in our little plant exchange, uh, you wouldn't apply for a Huxter permit for one-off Narva Civic Association Earth Day. Um, but what this really led us to, this can of worms, is that we really need to look at a resolution that outlines, let's say, when a permit is appropriate, uh, when your business privilege tax would be triggered, you know, so for example, the Girl Scouts, if they sell cookies at the skate park, we're not going to say, well, did you register for your business privilege tax and pay 0.1% on the $13 you made. Uh, but, but we need to just resolve that. We need to organize what is a special event policy process um, in the last six weeks. The office has been overwhelmed with events that have not happened actually during the manager's time here but you know the world kind of reopened and all these events were on the calendar <laughs> and it was uh, like throwing balls at the office um, and then remembering oh Samantha hasn't been here for any of these so none of these were even on her radar uh, we have a lot going on so the office is really going to look at what is a special event policy process now we have enough and enough volunteers now that we need to look at a permit process. We're going to need moments for that. How many people? There's a minimum, you know. So you have a barbecue, barbecue with 20 people. Well, that's not a special event that would trigger this process. But we need to think about what are those numbers? 250 people, probably. Uh, what's the context for the event? What are the resources needed? You know, so when whether it's the business association or with fireworks, the scavenger hunt. Let's say, okay, do the checklist. Police are needed. Public works are needed, etc. And we also need to keep track of how many hours. I mean, we do give the in-kind donations of having these resources. I think we should just have a record of that uh, and, and assure that events are doing due diligence, but that we also know that. Once approved, we would suggest that proof, proof of liability insurance be registered for the borough as well. And a central web page event calendar that's accessible for everyone with that permit process. Available. I don't think that that's anything that we as council need to workshop. We would have to, to give an ordinance for the process, but we really should hand this over to the office and the staff to say what makes sense for them since they're going to be the ones doing it. Did I? Yeah. No, I mean, it's really great to see all the events coming back here, and I'm, I'm really glad for it. I mean, it's definitely, you know, part of why I wanted to be here and work here. Um, you know, but it just, when people talk about what I have meetings with people about these events, and I say, oh, how are we going to do this? Like, oh, we'll just do it how we did it before the pandemic. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. Can you please actually tell me how you're going to do it? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and people have been pretty good, and people have good intentions. It's just really this process would help the borough, help the people in our community who want to make these things happen. Absolutely. And a huge shout out to Samantha Police Public Works. They were hit with a few weeks notice on two major events that was not on their radar. And again, we just assumed, well, everyone knows that this happens. When in fact, um, 
does it now, especially if you have been in Faro. And they hustled and made it happen. And um, thank you for that. Yeah, definitely. And that's all we talked about the intern um, proposal that I have. Okay. Uh, public health and safety. Okay, so at our last meeting, we met with the Shade Tree Commission, um, and uh, we talked about the permit for uh, removing a shade tree in the right of way, and that has been drafted by the staff mm -hmm. and shared with Shade Tree, and I think we'll, you know we'll probably see that soon. So that's that's in in, in the process, and. Um, we have um, ongoing traffic concerns. We keep a list in the committee, so when we hear of <coughs> traffic complaints, they are routed, you know, to us. So we'll be uh, returning to that list. Well, our next meeting is, is tomorrow morning at eight, so we'll be discussing that. We have reestablished um, uh, connections with the fire company, you know, so that we have a regular member attending our meetings or one of our members attending their meetings. Uh, this is something we were not able to do regularly during the pandemic earlier because of uh, schedule conflicts and I think our new meeting time makes it more possible. So Bill Henderson was in attendance and we discussed with him a concern that was raised about open burning regulations and so we had a discussion. I think we'll return to that again at our next meeting um, and then there um, there are a number of um, kind of EAC agenda items and uh, I'm going to meet, be meeting with the EAC and our manager uh, in a week or so so that we can coordinate the work I mean one of the pieces is the stormwater ordinance needs to be, I guess, revised by September. So that's very much on our radar, and we're looking to, at our meeting next week, kind of coordinate the work over the summer so that we can have time for the EAC to review it. Um, and then we also are hoping over the summer, partly because many of our members are academics, we're hoping that we can um, really take advantage of the summer to kind of prepare for the Green Fund project, which is something that our manager very bravely has taken on. And just, we're, we're very excited about it, that it could be part of the next budget process for 2023. So we we're just gonna, we just wanna plan our summertime um, to prepare for that. Um, there's also a progress being made by the manager on EV chargers in residential neighborhoods. Um, Samantha, you may be able to update us tomorrow in the meeting. Yeah, I can have a good update tomorrow day, and that's something that once, um, you know, once it's uh, ready and kind of all the numbers are finalized, it will then come to for council for final approval. You're talking about regulations or purchasing new charges? Yeah, purchasing new, new charging charges. stations okay. that are, that could, um, you know, be part of a PICO pilot. Sure. In residential neighborhoods. So. so that's it. So we meet at eight in the morning. All right. Thanks, Rob. Parking. Parking. Um, okay. So um, if you all recall, at our May business meeting, we voted to advertise the uh, municipal lot parking and towing ordinance. So that'll be coming before us at. Our June 16th meeting to approve or not, as the case may be. Um, so, so anyway, that's come, coming an action item coming out of our committee. Um, Park Mobile is going to be coming to us soon, um, so you have to look out for that announcement. Um, we're continuing our discussions of feedback that we received from council on residential parking at our May 5th meeting and. Um, we're uh, expecting to complete our discussions of that and, and any changes uh, that we want to recommend in time to provide an update at the January uh, 21st, January, sorry, July 21st uh, meeting of council. So that's where we're working towards that. 
deadline. And our next meeting is June 14th at 8 a.m. Oh, that may, may yep. I share? I actually, sure. as of now, have a tentative park mobile date. Oh, do you? Oh, sure. yeah. uh, so June 10th, it looks like uh, we will go live for oh, park wow. mobile. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Exciting. Yeah. All the um, all the back end programming work is done. Me and Michelle Carroll had a training with them on how to use the back end system. Um, it's a little, it's just you know our public works. Um, you know, if there are other obligations, they just need next week to put all the signage and stickers up and they'll be ready to go. Who has to lose quarters? She <laughs> yeah, has to lose quarters. Exactly. Oh, yeah. still. Still. However, <laughs> there are people who are very excited yes. about this. We hear about it. I hear about it all the time. So. All right. Great. That's it. All right. Uh, that's it for committee reports. Uh, are there any announcements for the good of council? Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So move. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Okay. <laughs> Unanimous. All right.